My name is Jenny Egan, costume designer. I recently did a film called Beasts of No Nation. Well, I first came to costume design. I moved here, I went to the University of Missouri and studied fashion merchandising, uh, marketing merchandising. And I really had no idea that my job existed at all. I didn't even think about it. Loved movies always, but had no idea the job existed. And through moving to San Diego and then moving to Los Angeles, searching for what was going to be my next move in life, I started meeting a lot of people and friends working in the film industry and in various you know positions. And I decided, you know, I was always into fashion. It sounded like costume design would be something really fun. And I started working in films and in, in, in the office, you know, in, in just various different jobs. And I had met a wonderful costume designer and basically said, I want to do what you do. I will do anything. I'll work for free. And she was so gracious and took me on and allowed me to work weekends with them to understand the process and then invited me along to a, a you know, rather big movie and, and just kind of a relationship grew and it continued from there. And I assisted her for a very long time, about 13 years. And then ultimately, you know, decided it was my turn to just give it a shot and see if, it could, I, feel, if I could do it, you know? And I, I feel very fortunate about how my career has gone this far and I'm, I'm very happy and so lucky. Yeah, you know, Beast of No Nation was um, an extraordinary project that came up. Uh, I worked previously to that with the director on a, um, a television show for HBO called True Detective, and it was a wonderful collaboration. You know, very difficult for me, you know, just being new and, and really getting a start. It wasn't my first thing, but it was definitely, a, you know, beginning, and it was such a success. And, you know, we just had a wonderful relationship, and he said, I'm going to do this, this small film, and we're going to, you know, go to Africa. And I thought, oh my gosh, I, you know, what a dream to go to Africa, What an experience like that, but not knowing anything about Ghana or, you know, what the kind of, what resources I would have available to, available to me for the job that I had to do or anything like that. And I kind of didn't really do any research either. I just, I talked to a local person that was going to work with me there and help me out and I said, these are the things that we need to have or basics. Oh yes, 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 that's all available, of course, you know, it's, you know, everything's there. And I think at one point I said to the director, I said, oh, uh, where are we going to live? You know, what kind of housing is it going to be? You know, just curious, but I didn't really research it and it was kind of refreshing in the end, but it was definitely difficult. It was, you know, the resources were not the same. It wasn't what I was used to um, or, you know, come grown up accustomed to, but it was extraordinary um, sort of figuring out how to, to do something, starting all over from the very beginning again. And, and so the film itself, and the director had done so much research and had been part of his life for a very long time and put it aside to do other projects and then it was time. And he was so, it was so passionate for him and then being able to be a part of that and bring these these characters alive and especially, you know, these young boys that I got to meet and their, their stories. I could sit here for days and tell you about each and every single one of them. And, and, and the men that at one point, you know, there was a lot of people that, that were soldiers in the, in in our you know in our little army that were um, actual soldiers, child soldiers themselves, and so their stories are something that kind of you know it's just amazing to watch people that you know not having a choice in their life and taking and taking challenge and facing it and then coming through that on the other side and being so proud to be a part of something is extraordinary for them and to tell their stories and be sort of rewarded for it in this way. And I think that that was really, um, it was, it was, it was a, in the end of the day, I was the most emotional experience I've ever had in my life. And it was, took a long time, I think, coming back and understanding who I was again, but I was a changed person. And I'm so grateful for that experience. That's why, you know, this award, especially last night, was for the, the you know, contemporary, um, excellence in contemporary costume, was really, really um, overwhelming for me because it was just the, it was just the icing on the cake, as they say, you know, for, something that's not just hard and it's not about it being so hard but my personal experience to it and then the one that I the chance I got to share with lives that you know and maybe thank God with social media I can stay in touch with them and maybe you know for a crew of people that had never stepped on a film set before never known what costumes were to um, create what we did was you know and they're just friends for life and I hope I can see them again yeah in the live person well in designing the characters for Beast of Nation you know, Carrie, like I said, done a lot of research, the director and, and known, and he was, and he's really, um, <clears throat> he knows his history and done a lot of research. And so he had suggested, you know, not just looking into, because I think when you come 
and look up if you just you know Google search child soldiers you're going to see a lot of the same thing and a lot of films have told a lot of stories and there's different armies and there's different factions of those armies and they come from different places but it was very important to him and he said you know just look up Commodores it was a particular Bush army in Sierra Leone and Liberia in, in the 90s and early 2000s and you know they're extraordinary, the photographs and the research and the, the story behind them and what, you know, it's all religious based and what it meant to them and what they were fighting for. And it was protection and, you know, the amulets and, and all of that. So it was, it was, what was interesting was, you know, you didn't get a lot of the story that was behind it until I actually got to Ghana and met with technical advisors that were commander, you know, commanders in that particular war. And, you know, they would tell, I'm a woman, so I didn't get as much information as some men might have gotten, which was passed on to me, and respectfully so. I mean, that's, it's a culture thing, you know, and, but I got some information, and understanding that was, made it so much more clear, but the pictures are just extraordinary, that these young boys, and you're heartbreaking, but the, the, the belief that they have, and, and they're just surviving, you know, and that's, you know, being such a young age and not understanding was, but so through the pictures and through the research, and then getting there, it was, it was really extraordinary. Well, I, and that's a difficult question. I, I don't know. I think that, you know, every day, if you think about yourself, you wake up and, and you know, sometimes we say, you know what, I want to look like Audrey Hepburn today, or I want to look like, you know, somebody out in the world who you saw something, and you're creating your own character. And I think, you know, when you're creating a character, we just, you know, just as, as more experience and time goes by, you don't think about it as what color looks good or what would, you know, this person do, reading a script and understanding who the person was. And so you, so you don't look at the actor as being, you know, Idris Elba, for instance, in Beast in a Nation. What would Idris Elba wear? It's not a, he isn't Idris Elba. He is the character, the commandant. And what is a commandant going to wear? And so starting to, you know, think about that. And what's surprising is, you know, when you're in a room and they walk in and, and you know, things could be going wrong or it's not fitting or it's not right that it's there's just that hook at one moment where you think oh i through my experience or through just thinking about it and doing the research you remember a picture you know in your research and you say, let me just try something and wow it works you know shock and you know then it just kind of becomes like an armor and their you know second skin and that's what's surprising is that you actually can get to that moment because sometimes it's terrifying you're in there and you've got nothing and nothing works and it's just not going anywhere and you know, and, and it's surprising, and then sometimes it's surprising, you know, that people are responding to it. Like, you know, doing Beasts of No Nation, I was just thinking, oh my God, these boys have clothes on today. You know, lucky that I'm here, and the tent is collapsing, and I don't have rolling racks, and the truck's falling apart, and so you're not even thinking that, that it would even be recognized. And then when I, it came out, and, you know, my peers and colleagues, you know, called and started calling and saying, Wow, I can't imagine what that was, but it was really extraordinary in some way that, you know, we haven't seen something before. And so, you know, when you're in it, you're in the thick of it. It's not, um, you don't think about what's going to happen down the road, but, just, you know, it's such, a, it's such a, a wonderful experience to be a part of something like that. I would always say, work hard. You know, that that's it. And do everything you can to be a part of it and, and do everything and be do it with just grace and do it with honor, honoring yourself and do it with, um, you know, be inspired and but love it. And whether or not you're loving that moment, pretend like you do. Because, you know, it's going to take in every, and especially in this, in this position, in this, in this world that we work in, it, you know, everybody, we all recommend people, we support each other, and that's what's important in the, in the, in the middle of it. You know, and, and there's a lot of times where, you know, a designer might say, or a supervisor might say, you know, let's do it this way, and, <clears throat> excuse me, let's do it this way, and you don't like the way they do it, or you have a better idea, or it's too old school, you think there's gotta be an easier way to do this. It's, it's not your time. You know, respect that and honor that tradition and the way that they work. And there's a reason for everything. And that was hard to understand in the beginning, but just a lot of yeses and just be there and be present and take in everything you can. And, 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 this, and the second thing is stay in it and work with people and work with people that you want to work with and go after that. But don't try to jump and do it real quick because you're going to find yourself in positions like, for instance, I did in Ghana. And had I not had, you know, the 15, 16 years of experience to know how I'm gonna get myself out of this situation, it might not have ever, we wouldn't have survived. You know, it's like I quick on my feet because I've been there, I've done that, I've had experiences before. And that's what then will, you know, keep you on solid ground and you can keep your budget in order and, you know, producers love you and will pass you along. So, you know, my biggest advice is just 
If you love it, stick in it and do it. And you know, because it was, uh, uh, to quote another designer, Daniel Orlandi said the other day, he said, you know what? If somebody says, you know what? That's not my job title. I don't do it. He said, guess who has to do it? I do. So there's always somebody that has to do it. So just be a part of it, you know, because the designer has to, it has to get done. And so, you know, support them so they can go on and, and continue to do other things and, you know, take you with them. And then you get, you know, you get to move up and see a whole bunch of different things.